you know, size does matter. Good morning everybody, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs and this is my weekly vlog on Monday, June the 11th, 2018. And I hope everybody had a good weekend and uh, I hope you have a good week ahead of you as well. So what are we into this week? Well, you saw in the teaser at the very beginning I have finished quilt number eight, my largest quilt to date. I had shown you it uh, a week ago um, hanging on the wall behind me. Um, but at that point it hadn't been quilted and bound. Um, it is now quilted and bound. Um, once I got going on it, it wasn't too bad for the quilting. I did walking foot quilting. Um, free motion quilting I think might be very difficult on that quilt using my machine. Um, not if I used a long arm, but I don't have a long arm. So um, anyways, I'm really happy with this one. There are some flaws in it. Um, I point them out to you, but why bother? If you can't see them, then it's perfect. And, you know, but with each one that I make, I get a little better. So I think I'm ready to start on a queen size quilt for our bed. And I'm going to design it um, in Electric Quilt 8, which is a computer program, and you've heard me talk about it before. Um, I have been working through lesson plans in a book that I got along with the program, teaching me how to use it. So I'm going to give that a go and see what I can come up with. Um, so that's kind of part of this week's project. Lots of projects this week to do. Um, I'm making clown pants. Clown pants, you say? Well, I call them clown pants. Technically, they are uh, what they call pajama pants. Now, I have no desire to own a pair of pajama pants. I have never worn a pair of pajama pants. And quite frankly, I think pajama pants worn out in public are ridiculous. That's why I call them clown pants, because you look like a bloody clown. Um, which reminds me, I want to go over to the party city today and get one of those red noses so I can wear it to clown uh, pant class tomorrow, Tuesday. You know that I'm taking sewing classes and I'm doing one right now using your serger. Well, we've done some basics with the serger and I've learned quite a bit uh, about my serger, including how to thread it. And I'm getting now to the point where that's not a problem, which is good. That in itself was worth the price of the course. Uh, but anyways, now we're moving into applying some of the things we did on practice pieces, I guess, in, into a practical project. And since I'm the only guy in the class, well, the project that's been selected are pajama pants. Now, they're very easy to make, I think, and that's why we're doing it. And we'll be able to apply some of the things we've already learned to this. So that's the way I'm looking at it. I am not making these because I'm in desperate need for another pair of pants and I want to make these all the time. No, I'm going to learn whatever the techniques are that use the features of the serger. So I've got my material. Now, I have learned one thing. Um, I have never cut out a pattern before in my life. Um, now this was very simple pattern. I mean, basically you have three pieces. Well, two pieces are doubled. Like you have a left leg, a right leg front, left leg, right leg back. And then you've got this piece for a drawstring. This does not have a separate waist piece. It's a fold down, roll down, I don't know what you call it, kind of waist. I think we're gonna be using elastic in it. Well, good, pants I can grow into. And at the rate I've been going lately, that should be, shouldn't be too long. Uh, with that, a little bit of weight gain these days. Gotta do something about that. Stop eating, I guess. Whatever, but I digress. Um, so I've cut out the pattern and I think I did it right. And um, well, so that's, that's something new. I've never done that before. Who knows? Maybe I will find after I've made these pants that I want to try my hand at doing some other kind of, uh, you know, garment sewing. Um, might be neat for Halloween costumes, although we don't do Halloween much anymore. But, you know, who knows? Anyways, it's a skill, it's, it's practice, and I will definitely learn something. Um, so, 
I was teaching yesterday my art journaling class and if you are a regular follower of Stephen and Walter Live you know that because I talked a little bit about it on yesterday's show and we also put on uh, our production yesterday at uh, 5 o'clock instead of 4 o'clock because my class runs from 1 to 4. And the ladies had a good time. It was a smaller group. Oh, nice weather's keeping people away. And we're done now for the summer. We will resume the classes come September. And uh, I asked the group basically what they'd like to do. And they came up with a list of some interesting s subjects. Uh, they even suggested that maybe some of them during the class, you know, one of them could be a guest uh, presenter sort of a thing of a technique. And I thought, sure, that's great. It takes the pressure off me for one thing. Um, and I'm kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel coming up with, uh, you know, something new each time I teach this class in terms of a background technique. So I thought, sure, let's do that. And I think we're going to uh, do some classes that will be basically more or less um, a workshop kind of thing. Bring what you're working on and we'll just work. They're a great group. They get along well with each other. Um, you know, they like to share ideas. They like to share their equipment. If somebody needs something, somebody else has got it. They don't have any hesitation about doing that. So I was toying with the idea of not running them anymore. I thought it may have run its course. I mean, after all, I've done 16 classes. So that's over a two year period. Um, but, and I mentioned that to the ladies, but they said, no, they enjoyed the classes. They want them to continue. So sure. And I want to keep my foot in the door as well. You know, um, it keeps me busy. It keeps me active. It keeps me thinking and it keeps me creative. So yeah, it's a win-win all the way around. So what did we do in this class? Well, this class, instead of working in our journals, we did what I call garbage tags. Um, here's the first one that got it all started. I showed this to them and they want to learn how to do this. Now, you don't see the garbage on this because it's covered up in the layers, but basically it's packaging. If you look up here and here and in behind here, it's pieces of packaging that have been ripped up and then we use it as a background layer and then we add other things. And if you look at this thing that looks like sort of like a telephone, that's just one of those plastic things that comes off, uh, you know, a two pack of ketchup or salsa, or whatever, you know, that you buy at some place like Costco or something like that. And I just painted it, aged it and created the tag. Well, they want to do this. So we did. And I made another one as an example. And I do have a video uh, on here showing you how to uh, do this. In fact, I should make a note and I'll put that in my, no, I think it's in last week's uh, notes it is it's in last week's notes uh the link to the youtube video that i made showing how to make this one again packaging these little things are clips that come on clothing that hold them together in the package and i just painted them gold that kind of thing and the one i made during the class yesterday is this one again the same idea now these other pieces that are on here these are garbage to me because they are leftovers from other projects that I've done and I don't throw away anything I cut out or that or a die cut or something like that if I don't use it I just put it in a basket and I had a lot of this stuff and I took that basket full of stuff to the class and they I let the ladies have free reign of going through it and taking whatever they like because after all I'm gonna be making more of this kind of stuff and they might as well you know might as well share it because I'll never use it all up so anyways it's kind of a fun thing to do and it's a way of using up bits and pieces of what you got around uh, you know in your stash and plus it uses up you know packaging that otherwise would go into landfill um, so just another kind of uh, technique okay so moving on to YouTube channel of the week this is not an actual channel although you can go to YouTube plug in wish and you will find people talking about this uh, website um, it's a website that sells everything um, electronics art supplies uh, sewing supplies garments all this kind of stuff at ridiculously low prices they sell a lot of those things that they call as seen on TV um, as well now I'm not sure what the quality of these things are uh, there's lots of reviews about uh, what people have bought from this uh, website the website's called wish.com um, but I ordered from it as well 
So I'm going to stick in the little video that I made about this website right now. This week's YouTube channel is not a YouTube channel, but it's a website that I stumbled upon while I was watching some YouTube channels. This is a website that's entitled Wish, wish.com. And the whole thing is it brings you all kinds of art supplies and electronic devices and household gadgets and everything you can imagine, including those seen on TV kind of products at ridiculously low prices. Now, I suspect that most of these products are cheap knockoffs. However, they do have a lot of items that are for free and only you only pay the shipping. So I thought I'd take a chance. I set up an account, um, which just basically is your name, your address, your phone number, um, and I purchased a watch. Now the watch is free, but it's costing me 65 cents for shipping, 65 cents Canadian. I could go through PayPal. So this is a legitimate site. It isn't a scam in the terms of them trying to get your information. Um, I don't expect that this watch is going to be of great quality, but I'm testing it out to see. Now, if you want to know more about this website, go on YouTube, just put in the word wish in your search engine, and you're going to find hundreds of videos where people talk about and compare products that they have bought from this website. And of course, like anything, there are mixed reviews and it probably depends on what you ordered. But it's kind of fun to look through what they have, look at the ridiculously low prices on some things. And if you want to take a chance, well, take a chance. Um, I would suggest you buy something that costs only a couple of bucks or go for a free item. And there are lots of free items and check out the shipping price first before you order it. Um, so, when I get my watch, I will review it on my vlog and let you know how that worked out. So I just got an email this morning telling me that they uh, are shipping my product and I should expect it in three or four days or something like that. Um, so we'll see and I'll, I'll share what I get with you. It's a watch. We'll see what the quality is. And it's costing me a whole, it was a freebie. They have a lot of freebies on that site. And the, whole, and the shipping cost on this freebie is 65 cents Canadian. So we'll see, 65 cent watch, wow. All right, persons of interest, we don't have anybody this week, sorry. Um, but just a reminder, uh, look at the uh, details in the comments below if you would like to become a person of interest. Please, I would love to have you on here. I say that every week but I mean it. Um, also below are the resources for this week. There's a link to Stephen and Walter Live. Um, there's a link to the book I'm going to talk about today. There's a link to that uh, site you just saw the video for. And there's a link to um, a product that I'm going to feature uh, later on uh, in my segment on what's in my drawers. So moving on. So what's pissing me off this week? <laughs> well, we had an election, and I've told you about that. And I will no longer say Americans are idiots for putting in Trump. We in Ontario are idiots for putting in mini Trump, and that's this Doug Ford idiot. And he is an idiot. But he won a majority, the majority of the seats, and so he's now our new premier of the province. So, hopefully, he has enough intelligence to realize, unlike Trump, he just can't do whatever he wants to do. Um, and I hope he has smart people around him that will keep him in check. Only time will tell. Uh, what am I pissed off about? Pissed off about the whole election, actually, not just about Doug Ford getting in. There was nobody to vote for. They are, they're all idiots. I mean... We've had a liberal government for the last 15 years, and for a majority of that time, it's been led by Kathleen Wynne, who's a very smart, intelligent woman, but she blew it in this election. People were sick and tired of the liberals. So instead of her going out there and trying to at least campaign uh, to make them see sense, to see the good things that her government has done, because they did some good things. Every government has its good, good actions and its bad actions. Um, but what she did instead was 
near the in the last week of the election she basically declared that there was no way she could win that her party could win wow defeatist attitude or what yeah by political analysis that was pretty much the situation but she's a politician you never admit defeat especially one week before the election I mean how much does that undermine the other candidates running in other ridings for your party all the volunteers that come out to support you to help you in the whole bit when she made that announcement you must have been able to have heard a, a pin drop in the room and then the next thing you would have heard drop is people's jaws like really so as a result of that well what contribute to her loss she, she didn't just lose the election she lost the party because you have to have eight seats in the uh, house in order to re retain official party status she has seven seven seats and we're talking about a house that has over 120 some seats I think it's 133 but it could be 123 I'm not sure which so she basically pulled the rug out from under her party now of course she has announced that she is resigning as leader of the party uh, go figure surprise what a way to retire eh? just sell everybody down the tubes and go bye-bye I mean she is not out of a job she's an older lady maybe she wants to retire um I think she is a lawyer um, most of them are um, she's got money she's got income plus she's going to have a pension a nice pension from her years as the premier and working in the government so she's not hurting and a lot of these people when they retire from politics end up as CEOs of major corporations or something anyways because um, they make all the right connections they network I guess so don't cry for Kathleen Wynne she's going on but in the meantime her party's in chaos they don't have uh, party status which means that they can't get any money from the government for their campaigns they're going to have to do fundraising they have to find a new leader they basically have to build the party back up and that is going to be a difficult job meanwhile what else is pissing me off is the fact that the right the uh, progressive conservative party which in American terms the progressive conservative party is very much like the Republicans and the liberals are more to the left and they're much more like the Democrats well the press progressive conservatives have got um, the majority of seats so they can pass through almost anything they want to pass through in the government now they will be opposed by the official opposition which is our third party the New Democratic Party or New Demo or uh, NDP now they tend to be very severely left they support the unions they're kind of like maybe the Labour Party in the UK um, much more socialistic in their philosophies than the other two parties um, and because of their beliefs and and how severe they can be they've only been in power in this province once in the history of our province um, but they represent the official opposition and they're really good at criticizing and keeping the government in check but they do not have the majority of the votes now if we'd had a minority government where the conservatives would be in power but they would have depended upon uh, votes from the NDP in order to pass certain bills they want to pass that would have been a more interesting situation they wouldn't be able to get away with what they'll probably be able to get away with because they have a majority so that pisses me off now there is a movement right now that I think they they want to change the way we elect our officials in government see we do it by um, basically by writing which means a certain area uh, if the candidate whoever whatever candidate gets the most votes gets a seat in um, the legislature and that's how it's done and whichever party has the most seats make up the government okay but they're not necessarily the popular person um, you know for premier for example so I think there's a movement right now I don't know much about it, um, it, it this kind of thing pops up after every election everywhere that where you vote for you know it's it's more what person gets the most votes not so much no I don't know if that works either however they do it because in a sense that's how this works well no it depends 
most time you vote for the party that you support. Doesn't matter who the representative is. Um, I think what they're trying to do is change it in such a way that you would rather you vote for the person and if they happen to represent that party, I don't know. I don't know if there's any absolute fair way to do these things. Um, so anyways, we have for the next four years, um, a progressive conservative party led by mini Trump. So yeah, I don't want to think about it too much because it could be quite depressing, but maybe he'll surprise us. I'm sure that's what a lot of Americans who didn't vote for Trump said too when he first got in. Well, maybe he'll surprise us. He has surprised us. It's not in a good way. And that's why I'm afraid it's going to happen to us too. So anyways, I know for the rest of the world, who cares, right? Um, we're not talking about the president of the United States. We're talking about the premier of a province, okay? Sort of like a governor of a state or something like that, just to make the equivalent. Because I know, I find that um, most people in the world, especially Americans, are completely, and I'm not using this word in a derogatory sense, I'm using it in its true sense, are ignorant of how Canadian politics works. Ignorant means lack of knowledge, is what that means. And, you know, like, it, there's always the joke about... Uh, Who's the president of Canada? We don't have a president, we have a prime minister. And there's a lot of people who don't know that. So we know more about American politics than Americans know about ours. So anyways, maybe you want to see what's going to happen. You want to see the parallels between the province of Ontario and the United States. Because unfortunately, I think there will be parallels. It's just that our province isn't as powerful as a whole country. So yeah, anyways. And as I got on to this yesterday in Stephen and Walter Live, some people said, can we get off that topic? Yeah, let's get off that topic, okay? It's just, that's another thing that's pissing me off. This stuff with politics is just taking up too much of my thinking power. So let's not think about it. Okay, moving on. Product reviews and what's new? Okay, I finally got them. It took a while. Uh, I got these rings ooh ooh here looks like a 3d tunnel okay what are these these are for free motion quilting to hold down your quilt I haven't tried them yet but they have some kind of material on the back that's kind of grips your material you put this down uh, on top of it your uh, there's a spot here where your needle can go through your foot and you use your free motion foot and these little knobs you hang on to and apparently you can move it all around and it's much easier than doing it with your hands. No idea, but I got them. These were pricey. These were about 200 bucks after with shipping and tax and everything. 205, I think. Um, they come from a company called Sparrow Quilt Company. They're in Edmonton. Um, and I actually reviewed their uh, channel uh, a few weeks ago so you can check that out if you're into uh, quilting and that kind of thing. They do have a lot of neat and unique tools for quilting um, on their website uh, as well. Um, but it did take a while to get these. It took over a month or so, maybe about five weeks. Um, now they were out of stock when I ordered them I guess. The only thing that kind of bothered me about the whole thing was they didn't tell you they were on back order. They made it sound like that these were all in stock and I had to write to them after a few weeks and ask them about, you know, when am I going to get this? And um, I got kind of a nasty email back, um, which didn't endear them to me any much of simply saying, you know, look, it's a popular item and we're out. They're coming in at some point in time. Then I got in, then um, a few weeks later, I sent another email just checking on the status of it and I got a much nicer email but different person so you know one person's got good customer relations the other one needs to get a personality okay and I also ordered from Amazon something called the supreme slider and what this is it'll work in conjunction with these rings it is a let me just pull it out of the package here it is a, not Teflon, but it is a slippery plastic light sheet. It's got a hole in the center of it. And it's this part um, is not sticky, but it's made of a material that so it will stick. It won't slide 
on your extended table for your sewing machine. The idea of the hole is your needle goes through that. You put this on your extended table and it's supposed to let your quilt, you can move your quilt around it easier. And I haven't tried it yet either, but um, I've seen them used on YouTube videos and it does look like a good piece of, uh, uh, or a good tool to have. So, because when you're pushing the quilt around underneath on the, on the extended table, and if your quilt is big like that last one I made, it is very awkward and it does drag. It's very heavy, you know, you, you wouldn't think that something made out of fabric would be that heavy, but by the time you're at the stage where you're quilting it all together, they are quite heavy. So this is supposed to help moving it around. We shall, we shall see. Um, now, here's a little story for you on this next product I got. First of all, I'll show you the box. This is the box. This box came like this in a shipping box. I didn't do this. This is how the product came to me, okay? It's called a True Sharp 2. And you can see down here what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to sharpen your rotary blades. When you're cutting material with the rotary blades and with quilting you cut a lot of material, they dull relatively quickly. And they're expensive to buy replacement ones. Actually, I got some replacement ones at a fairly good price that seemed to work okay off of uh, Amazon. Uh, but if you were to buy them in this place like Michael's, well, of course, everything's inflated in there, they run you almost as much as the rotary cutter whole unit itself costs. But it is a necessary tool. I saw this on a YouTube video um, as part of, uh, it was some quilt show, and they one lady was presenting gadgets, basically, and she talked about this. So I thought, yeah, I wouldn't mind one of those because it's not a cheap little toy. It costs over $70 Canadian and I've seen them for up to like $100 uh, or more. Um, so I thought, you know, it'll probably pay for itself. That is if it works. Yeah. Okay. First of all, I get this box and it's all chewed up. Um, I pull out the pieces. It says on the back of the box, there's supposed to be a detailed instruction sheet. There wasn't. I called the company and the company uh, very nicely said, so sorry about that. We will, we can email you a PDF file of the uh, instructions. Great. I'm off the phone only two minutes. Bang. There it is. Got it. So it's very simple to use. You mean basically you put the blades in, they fit in a little holder. There's two diamond grit stones in this one on the top, one on the bottom. You push down the lid, you push the power button, and you let it do its thing. It rotates the blades around and sharpens them. And you do it on both sides for about 30 seconds, and then you do it again for 15 seconds. That's what it says. There's a little bottle of oil that you put on the stones as well, I guess, you know, for friction and that kind of stuff. Um, okay, so I tried it out, followed their instructions. Hmm. It took several times to get the blade sharp and two out of four of the blades, they sharpened okay. Um, the other two, now, now I don't know if it's because of the quality of the blades, like I, I bought, you know, the ones on Amazon, they are not Olaf, Olaf, is that how you say it? Uh, that kind of thing, but you know, um, they seem to work okay. But the other thing that was bothering me was the fact that in this package, in the shipping box, there was a label, a mailing address label with the address and the name of a person that I assume this product had been bought by and sent to, and they returned it. And that's why the box was in such bad shape. So I got a used item um, when I was expecting new. And the other thing that made me suspicious about this was on this box, okay, there were remnants of little pieces of tissue paper with scotch tape holding them on the back of it. It was like someone had wrapped this up and maybe given it as a gift. So I wrote through by way of Amazon. And by the way, this the company that makes this is called um, Grace 
the Grace Company. Um, and I think they're somewhere in, they might be in Utah. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyways, they're the people I talked to about the instructions, but they are not the people I bought this from. I bought it from a third party company on Amazon, because you know how Amazon works. They sell things from other companies. A company called What America Buys. Now, stupid me, I should have looked at the reviews on Amazon of this product, and I did after the fact, and the reviews of it are not that favorable. Some people absolutely love it, think it's the best thing since, you know, sliced bread. Others say it doesn't work. Don't waste your money on it. And it seems to be very, you know, balanced between the two. So I wrote a message to this What America Buys company and told them what my problem was. And basically, I told them everything I've just told you about my suspicion that this was a used product, that the reason why it's not doing what's supposed to be doing is because it's been used and maybe abused and that kind of thing. Well, I got back a very curt answer from these people that basically said this, too bad sucker. We, we don't sell used products is what they told me, but we don't manufacture them, we just sell them. So basically we're not gonna give you a refund or anything like that. Well, that pissed me off. So, <coughs> I figure this is a lost cause, but I wrote to the actual company that manufactured it, and I essentially told them everything I've told you about the product, said that it wasn't working properly, I had tried everything, I'd even got onto YouTube, and this company has about three videos about how to use it, which differed in their instructions as they were demoing it from the actual instructions I got for it slightly, um, I told them all about that, and I even copied the message that I got from this other company, uh, What America Buys. Um, and I just said, is there any assistance you can give me with this? And I was suspecting that they would come back and say, well, because this was, uh, it's out of our hands because you bought it from a third party, not directly from us, and blah, blah, blah. No, I didn't. Surprise, surprise. They wrote back to me said they were so sorry for the trouble I was going through, and they would send me, if I gave them my address, they would ship to me a brand new one, free. Well, I'm thinking, great customer service. So let me put a plug in for this company right now, and you know I'm not sponsored by anybody, okay, for this. Um, so their, the company, again, is called The Grace Company, their website is graceframe, all one word, graceframe.com. And they sell long arm quilting machines and other quilting supplies too. So I think they're a very reputable company. But I am impressed because when I called them about instructions, they immediately uh, rectified that situation. And now they're going to send me a brand new machine. And they didn't sell it to me. It came from a third party. So then I went on to Amazon again, and actually before I contacted the actual manufacturing company, I was on Am after I got that reply from that company, I went in and there's a button that says refund return kind of a thing. I hit that button, I requested from the company that uh, they tell me how to send it back to them and I would like a refund. And figuring, you know, they've already said Basically, they're not going to do that, but I thought I'd go through the official channels of Amazon. Well, I am very surprised at them. Now, here's where things get a little funny. I got a message back from this What America Buys saying, um, the quality of the product or whether, how much it worked, or how well it works or not is not their, basically their concern uh, because they're just a distributor. However, they would send me another one, a brand new one. So I've got two of these things coming. Um, and I'm hoping that they work better than this one that I have. I don't need three, counting the one that I've got right now. Um, but anyways, I was going to do uh, 
a bit of a number on this what America buys and say, you know, stay away from that company because they don't stand behind anything that they sell. But I'm not because they are sending me a brand new one. So even though they're a little PO'd probably at this, that they're making good on, uh, you know, customer relations. We'll see. I have not yet received these. Of course, that just happened the end of the week. So we'll see when they come through and I'll update you on that then. I guess the bottom line here is the squeaky wheel does get the oil. Um, but you know, it was an expensive product. And if it worked, if it, I would have, you know, wouldn't have said anything. I would have said, okay, fine. It works 50% of the time. But because it has obviously been used by somebody else, I'm thinking maybe that person has not used it properly and this is why I'm having trouble with it now. I don't know. We'll see when I get the other ones, if I really do get the other ones. I'll reserve my final judgments on both of these companies until I see if I get the product. Okay, so that's the saga of the True Sharp 2. Okay, let's move on to book reviews. Went through my stash, pulled up this book. Again, one I forgot I had. This is a little different. This is a, back from my scrapbooking days and when I did genealogy. It's called Scrapbooking Your Family History. It was done by a woman, her name is Maureen Taylor. Maureen Taylor uh, is uh, one of the gurus in the genealogy world. And this book, if you're into genealogy, you know, basically shows you and talks about research, how to set up things for future generations so that they can, um, you know, benefit from what you've done with the family history in an organized fashion and in a way that's uh, entertaining too. Um, now, as I said, this is a really old book. I mean, it was copyrighted in 2003. So I did a search and I did find it on Amazon and I found it on Amazon.ca, but I'm, if it's on Amazon.ca, it's usually on Amazon.com. I've got the hiccups again. And I paid originally for it, it says on the back here, $38.99 Canadian. On Amazon right now, you can get this exact book, brand new, and I think it was a ridiculously low price. I think it's like about four bucks, okay? Um, but this stuff doesn't go out of date. The, the, the information that's in here is just as current now as it was when I got it back whenever I got it. Um, and it's got some great ideas for presenting your genealo genealogical research. Um, I don't do genealogy anymore. I got bored with it. Um, well, I was hitting a lot of brick walls and uh, you know, it, I don't know. Nobody else in my family seemed to be really interested in it in the whole bit. And so I just kind of let it lapse. But all my information I did find, I have in binders. But really, nobody's ever going to, unless they're really into genealogy and, you know, and they want my stuff, uh, no one's going to read it. Because it's not in a format that makes it enjoyable. So this book would definitely help with that kind of thing. Um, so if you're into genealogy and you're into scrapbooking, this might be worth the investment, especially at four bucks. If you can get it for that price, what the heck, eh? Okay. Um, that was book review. Inspiration lists tips. Inspiration tips. Um, I don't really have anything that's really deep, but um, I'm thinking about, of course, I'm thinking about quilting, but I'm thinking about making art with scraps, like sort of like those tags I showed you, but using fabric instead. Um, but you can do it with paper. Uh, and I want to make an art quilt eventually, which means taking, you know, irregular shapes, not doing traditional squares, kind of doing your own design kind of a deal. But I got thinking, you could do something like that with a background on an art journal or background for a card or a scrapbooking page. You could do it out of paper. Um, Scrapbooking, you know, tends to be fairly um, traditional. You've got your pictures, you frame them, border them, you do a background treatment, you stick them down, you have a, a title, you have some journaling, you move on. Um, and that's the way a lot of people do their pages. 
maybe it's time to break out of that mold and try something wild. And that's where watching a lot of art journaling uh, videos and that kind of thing I think would help with that kind of idea. It's just a thought. I think I was inspired by this thought simply because of what I did on the weekend with the art journal tags, or the garbage tags, as I call them. Um, you can make art out of anything, really. You know, literally, one man's garbage is another man's art kind of a thing. So, just a tip, just an idea to play with. I come up with a lot of ideas, but uh, a lot of times I have them on lists, and I have the lists in a file folder, and every now and then I'll go through them and say, oh yeah, yeah, I forgot I thought about that. Um, I don't do every one of them that's on there. Um, like I said, there needs to be more hours in a day. Okay, so speaking of stash and trash and ideas, what's in my drawers this week? Brushos, so watch this. So what's in my drawers this week? Well, I went through and I found a product that I've had for quite a long time. And it's also a product that's been on the market for many, many, many years. And it's called brushos. And what brushos are, are little pots of powdered pigment. And you see, I have them in there. Mine have been used a fair amount. And I put little pieces on here to show me the colors. Um, there's more colors in this in the set. But, uh, or that you can get. Um, and it's an open set, so it means you can buy these individually. You don't have to buy them in a kit. I had originally bought them in a package of eight, as it says here, but I have a few more colors that I've added to it. Brushos are water activated, and they do some really cool effects. Now, I also bought at one time, and I'm sorry, I don't know where I got this uh, DVD, but... Um, it talks about how to use brushels to make like actual paintings because that's what it is. It's pigment, uh, the color that's put into paints. Um, but without, it's dry, it's not wet. So I found this very interesting, but this is a fairly sophisticated um, DVD. I mean, if you're an artist, you would understand what they're doing in here, the techniques, uh, especially if you're watercolor artists, because these really are um, like watercolors. Um, but if you want to just have some fun with them for backgrounds and art journals or on tags, then I'll show you very quickly um, what you can do with these. Now I have two types of paper here. This is a watercolor paper and this is a high gloss one. We're just going to see what the difference is between the two when we use the brushes on them. Um, you can also use ordinary cardstock. Uh, you can use tags. Basically, you can use almost anything with brushos. So I have a little spray bottle of water because these become activated when you wet them. Now, the simplest technique for using these is just simply mist. Now you notice there's some color coming up here because I spilt a little bit of this, but this is what happens with them. So put a little water, mist some water on your substrates, and then you take your um, pigment powder, the brushel pigment powder, and you'll see there's a little hole here on the top. I just used a um, push pen to create that, and you shake it out. Now, my little things keep coming off the top of these, so, but just watch what happens. Isn't that cool? And it'll bleed out as you do this. Now, you see here, this is on the glossy paper, so there is a little bit of a different effect. If you want to move it more, just lightly spritz it a little bit more. And don't worry if your card starts to curl like mine is. Um, as it dries, it'll go flat. Let's just add another little color here and see what we get. And you see how little I'm using. Now you can give this a dry with your heat gun. And it doesn't take that long to dry. Depends on how much water you used. Now 
Now, if you have pooling in some spots, you can just take a paper towel or uh, cloth and um, just sop it up. And I think I'm going to do that over here. I think I may need a new rig. This one's pretty saturated with paints and things like that, so it's not absorbing very well. But let's grab some paper towels. And as I said, you can just sort of blot. Hit it again with the heat gun for a bit. And you see as it dries, the card stock is flattening out. Of course, it didn't warp the uh, glossy paper. And you could use Jupo on these. You can get some really neat effects using Jupo. Jupo is a type of paper that's basically a plastic. Now, you don't have to spritz your paper first. What you can do is you can lay down dry powder and um, then hit it with the water. So I'll just get another card here and show you what I mean. Another piece of watercolor cardstock. Let's take a different color. And at first, you're not going to really, it's not going to look like you've got much uh, pigment on here. But once you hit it with water, see what's happening? <coughs> Excuse me. And the more water I add to it, the more the crystal dissolves. And you'll see how they start to bleed in. So it's really cool and an interesting way of making quick backgrounds. And I think the fun of using brushes is that you're never absolutely sure what you're going to get. You'll also notice I said that I was putting down some uh, separate colors, but it looks like it came out with other colors as well. That's because each one of these is mixed with a couple of different colors. So again, you don't have a lot of control uh, in using this method as to what color you're going to be uh, creating with. However, you could put a little of these into a plastic paint palette, palette um, one with the little wells in it, and spritz it with just a little water, and then you make paint, and then you can paint with it as well. There are a whole lot of other techniques that you can use with brushos. Um, just go on YouTube, put in the word brushos, B-R-U-S-H-O, and you'll find hundreds of videos where people do some really amazing things with this product. Now, one warning, it will stain your hands, just like any paint, so you may want to wear gloves when you're doing this if that's a problem for you. It's not a problem for me. My hands are always stained, see? Um, but it's really cool. So let's just look at these again. That's on the glossy paper, and these two are on watercolor cardstock. And you can see the effects you get. I especially like it on the glossy paper. Um, so that's what's in my drawers this week. Okay, so what's coming up in the next week? Well, I have three sewing glasses next week. Yeah, I'm an addict. I have my surgery class Tuesday night. I have a, the first of a brand new series of classes called BQ, BQ Boot Camp, Basic Quilters Boot Camp, where we're going to learn some uh, standard tricks of the of the quilting world. Um, we're going to work on some traditional blocks and create a little little tiny uh, lap quilt, uh, basically, from that. Um, again, this is 
I, I'm working, I, I don't know if I'm going to learn a lot new in this class because I've forged ahead on my own, but you always learn something, I find, and also I want, I may have some bad habits that I've picked up along the way because I didn't, you know, take a class, so this may help me, you know, do things the right way. And then on Saturday, I have the my last class in free motion quilting. I had there was only there's only two sessions in this uh, class. We had the first session last Saturday, as I told you, and we did walking foot quilting. And this next session, we're doing free motion. So this is the one that I've been looking forward to uh, because I've tried it on my own and I'm not very good at it. And I have a feeling I'm still not going to be very good at it. But again. I might learn some tricks uh, that will help me get better at it because eventually my goal is is to be able to do free motion quilting on my machine and decently okay so three classes and then on Saturday we're off to Toronto we have a couple of friends there that we see usually about twice a year um, we're going into their place for dinner and we're staying overnight uh, they live right downtown in the city, and that'll be good because they've been, they're retired uh, now as well, and uh, they've been off on some adventures, uh, some trips and things, so it's great to get together and share our, you know, our thoughts and pictures and things of our trips and whatnot, and just to catch up. And we've known these people for a long time. I was just saying to Walter the other day, we've known them as long as Walter and I have known each other, and... Walter and I have been together for 35 years. So yeah, these are probably our oldest friends, I guess. But like I said, we only usually see them twice a year. One time we go to their place for the weekend, another time they come to our place for the weekend. It's just, you know, they don't live that far away, but I don't know, that's just the way it is. So anyways, that's coming up. And what else? Nothing much this week. You notice I haven't mentioned my mother once. Oops, just did it. Not getting in there. Um, just to say, um, some of you sent me some comments and that saying that you like to hear about my mother and you ask about her and that's very nice of you. Um, so just to say right now, my mother is doing fine. Um, we haven't had any major disasters. Knock wood. Don't jinx this. Um, so yeah. She's officially on the waiting list for a nursing home, but as I said, that's gonna take probably years, literally, to get in. So that's been looked after. And uh, I got a phone call from what we call the CCAC, which are the people that look after nursing home and other things. And I guess they have found a PS, uh, well, yeah, personal care worker who, well, uh, uh, come in and do some things for my mother. I think mainly what we talked about uh, with the, the representative from the CCAC was having somebody come in uh, probably once a week or something and help my mother bathe. Um, my mother hasn't used her bathtub in three years um, and like it's not that she's being a pig or anything like that but she sponge ba bathes and that kind of thing because basically the, the t bathtub she can't get in it or get out of it on her own. Um, and I don't want her even trying because that's uh, a recipe for disaster right there if she was to slip. Um, so apparently uh, they've got somebody that's going to come in twice a week. I don't know for how long. You usually don't get very many hours, maybe an hour each time. But I asked them to call my mother uh, to, you know, set it up with her, to see what her needs were, because really I don't know what my mother really wants uh, with this. Um, so we'll see, uh, about that. Um, I don't think they've gotten in contact with her yet, uh, playing telephone tag, uh, but hopefully this week they will. And at least that's a little bit more assistance for my mother. And that's a good thing. Okay. That's all we need to say about my mother. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So final notes here. Um, just to back up again, not to belabor the point. But have you ever heard the expression, never say never? Well, that expression applies to me uh, when I go on about how stupid the Americans were to put Trump in his power. Never say never. We're just as stupid. We put mini Trump, Doug Ford, 
into power. So I can't say that ever again. So never say never. Okay, so I hope you have a good week and we will be doing Stephen Walter Live four o'clock this coming Sunday, whatever date that is, the 17th, June 17th. Oh, that'll be Father's Day. At least it's Father's Day here. So, you know, I might be cutting into your Father's Day time, but, um, well, there's a nice gift for your husband or your father. Um, have them watch with you, Stephen and Walter, live. I'm sure that will be the thrill of the weekend. Right. Okay, enough. Have a good week. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.